Coming to you from behind the craziest socialist lines of the Pacific Northwest, local and national news, talk, and opinions, this is the Behind the Line Podcast. So I want to elaborate on this deal that took place at the Department of Interior in Washington, D.C. on October 14th. Uh, Over 100 people were arrested as climate activists protested outside the Interior Department Thursday, demanding the Biden administration do more to combat climate change. Supporters rally outside the Department of Interior as a sit-in held by climate activists. Over 100 people were arrested during the protest at the Interior Department building on Thursday, October 14th in downtown Washington, D.C., and some reportedly were tased, the Associated Press reported. An Interior Department spokesman said a group of protesters rushed the Interior Department lobby, injuring at least one security officer who was taken to a nearby hospital. A spokeswoman for the protest group said that police and protesters clashed outside the building and police tased several unarmed protesters. Melissa Schwartz, a spokesman for Interior Secretary Deb Haaland, said the protesters were taken in for booking. Protesters also linked arms and sat along the White House fence line and called on President Joe Biden's administration to take more action to combat climate change and to ban fossil fuels. Uh, this is some more information information on this from the Associated Press. Interior Department or, uh, Halland was traveling Thursday and was not in the building during the protest. Interior Department leadership believe strongly in respecting and upholding the right to free speech and peaceful protest, Schwartz said in a statement. Centering the voices of lawful protesters is and will continue to be an important foundation of our democracy. It is also our obligation to keep everyone safe. We will continue to do do everything we can to de-escalate the situation while honoring First Amendment rights. Jennifer Falcon, a spokesman woman for the Indigenous Environmental Network, a coalition of Native American and environmental activists, put the number of people arrested at 50. The protest was part of a historic surge of Indigenous resistance in the nation's capital that started on Monday, Indigenous People's Day, outside the White House, she said. The Andrew Jackson statue at the center of Lafayette Park across the street from the White House was defaced with the words, expect us, part of a rallying cry used by indigenous people who have been fighting against fossil fuel pipelines. Jackson, a slave-owning president, forced Cherokees and many other Native Americans on deadly marches out of their southern homelands. Protesters also climbed a flagpole outside the Army Corps of Engineers office, demanding a stop to Line 3 an oil pipeline upgrade that was recently completed in Minnesota. The pipeline will bring tar sands oil from Canada to Wisconsin. Falcon said in an interview that her group has no formal role in that protest, which she said was led by autonomous frontline leaders and water protectors. The group called for an end to fossil fuel projects such as Line 3 and the Dakota Access oil pipeline, as well as abolition of interiors bureau of indian affairs and restoration of millions of acres of land seized from native americans howland a member of the laguna pueblo tribe in new mexico is the first Native American cabinet secretary. Protesters who refuse to obey the law and leave the building after multiple warnings may be arrested, Schwartz said. Over 100 people were arrested and some were reportedly tasered by police as climate activists protested outside the Interior Department. Protesters gathered to call on the Biden administration to do more to combat climate change and ban fossil fuels. I find it interesting that this is being almost completely ignored by mainstream media as far as television goes. 
some people, some of the news articles I read compared this to the January 6th incident. And what is the difference? It is a group of protesters, and I've watched the video, that forced their way into the building. Uh, there was a, a girl, in fact, up in a doorway kicking a cop. She stole his hat, and I'm assuming that's the one that got injured. I don't know, but uh, what what is the difference here? These these uh, climate psychos t- t- tried to take over a government building. They did get in, uh, and yet nothing. This isn't being referred to as insurrection or uh, civil war or any of that other stuff that uh, Pelosi and her little cronies are calling the January 6th incident. So, why is this okay? Because they're uh, crazy environmentalist Democrat types. So, it's okay for them to go ahead and try to force their way into government buildings. And like I said, why why is this going largely ignored? And uh, nothing's being done. Where, where are the calls for investigation on this and... It's just the double standard in this country is outrageous. I would really like an explanation as to why these left-wing terrorist organizations are allowed to run around and do whatever they want. Groups like BLM and Antifa and now these climate Nazis, you know... We just spent an entire year watching BLM and Antifa tear apart cities, destroying millions of dollars in property, stealing and looting from these stores, and nothing was done. No, nobody's prosecuted. You know, they're assaulting the police, trying to burn down federal buildings. Why isn't that an insurrection? Why isn't that like the Civil War? Why wasn't anybody prosecuted why weren't there any congressional hearings over all of this because it wasn't the capitol building because we didn't enter our american royalties house with these other uh incidences that were the same or worse than january 6th because somebody sat dared to sit in the queen's chair in the house I mean, come on. What? We need explanations from these lame-ass politicians who have this very profound double standard. Of course, I know we'll never get those answers because they want this chaos and they want these violent protests and they want to rile everybody up into a frenzy because out of all this chaos will come more control and more limitations and more of our rights being stripped away for our own protection you're seeing it happen in real time and it's happening very quickly I think we're about to find out what it was like to be an East German in the 70s And it's not good. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Behind the Line podcast at BehindTheLinePodcast.com. If you liked this, I hope you will like, share, and subscribe to our channel. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Facebook at BehindTheLineWA. You can find us on Twitter at BehindWA. You can also find us on Telegram and LinkedIn at Behind the Line. And I'm on Rumble. Thanks again for listening, and I appreciate your support.